Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Best Nerd Life. Today I am super duper excited because I'm going to be upgrading this thing, my main work PC. Now I've had this for about seven, eight, nine years, and I've got to say it's been a very, very faithful machine. It basically dragged me through university. And yeah, it's getting pretty old now. It's getting scuffed up, it's getting a bit rusted, and I just feel like it's time to upgrade it. Um, and just get some new components in there. Now this isn't going to be like an insanely intense build, it's just going to be a modest one with a few extra parts to just kind of liven it up a little bit. As you can see from the front this is a Midian case but it is actually a custom build PC. One that I got from CEX for not a lot of money. I essentially just needed something to run Windows on. Now when I took it home, it was pretty, pretty sluggish. So I cleaned it up, installed all the right drivers, and yeah, I gave it a new lease of life. So yeah, in terms of internals, it's got an Intel Core i5-2320. Uh, it's got 128 gigabyte SSD down here. Uh, it's got two times four gigabytes RAM. Uh, it's got a couple of fans, um, it's got a sound card, it doesn't have a graphics card either, it's onboard graphics. And that is one thing I want to concentrate on in this build, is actually installing a graphics card and getting this just kind of upgraded a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be the most modern build, but you know, I've got a little bit of spare cash at the moment, so I thought why not? At this moment in time, I've got the case that I want, I've got the graphics card that I want, I'm just waiting on the power unit because this thing right here is 350 watt, it is not going to power the new components. So I thought, you know what, whilst I'm waiting, I'm actually going to transfer this entire thing into the new case, make sure it works, and then once my additional component that I need comes, I'll just replace that and then insert the graphics card. That'll be later on in this video. But right now, all I'm gonna do is transfer this stuff into the new case. Now, what is my new case going to be? Well, if I move this over here and pick this up and put it into view, it is this thing. The, if I remember correctly, let me read it out. The CIT F3 Black Micro ATX Gaming Case. So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is not an expensive case. It only cost me about $27.99. Uh, I'm not trying to break the bank with this build. I'm just trying to get the most out of my money that I can. And the things that kind of attracted me to this case, apart from it being cheap, is the fact that it has a side panel. It's nice acrylic. Um, it also has, on the front here, power button, USB, two USB slots, uh, kind of sound slots. It's also got a USB 3 uh, port, which is great. It's got a recessed reset button, and it's also got a SD and micro SD slot. Now, I believe that the USB 3 won't be usable with my current board because it don't, I don't think it has a USB 3 slot, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm planning ahead with this. I'm going to hopefully get a board later on with this additional component. So I'm, I'm trying to like, you know, plan ahead. Inside this thing, it has all the cables you might expect that, you know, make it turn on, make the USB ports work, all that kind of stuff. It has a front mounted fan, a back mounted fan, and it has kind of areas here for uh, hard drives and an SSD on top. Comes with a nice baggie full of uh, screws and whatnot. So yeah, it's pretty good. And in terms of cable management as well, if I turn it around here and it's got a nice kind of area where you can do you know, cable management and run cables around and all that kind of stuff. It's it's a nice modern PC case, in my opinion at least. It's a hell of a lot more modern than this absolute beast. So in comparison to this old thing, it's slightly taller, it has less depth, and I believe it's the same size width-wise. So for me, actually, this is pretty good because where I put it in my room, this will fit in more snugly, which is, again, another fantastic thing. All these things I was looking for, for a PC tower case, 
for this price, I am very, very happy with it. It might not be the best one on the market. It might not be the best quality or anything like that. But for me and this build, it's absolutely perfect. And I can't wait to get all my components into this thing. And now I'm gonna take this apart, get all my components out and just go crazy. Oh, I also forgot to mention as well, this new PC case doesn't have any room for a CD drive or a DVD drive or whatever. So I'm not gonna be taking this out. I'm just gonna be taking out the components that I want. I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of this case. It could be useful for a future build, but I probably will, to be honest, because it is, it's, it's seen much better days, to be honest. That was a bit tough coming out. everything out. I'm looking forward to having my new system up and running very very soon. I'll take that off as well. I'll take the expansion card things up. So in this new case of mine it only has four kind of expansion slots on the outside, which is great to be honest, because that's the amount that is here. Um, but unfortunately, because my graphics card will take two of them up, I have to sacrifice at least one of these expansion, one of these are cards. So I think I'm gonna get rid of the sound card because I kind of need the USB 3. Um, one at the moment, I also need the wireless one. So, you know, I'm gonna get rid of this for the time being. Kind of keep it safe so I can potentially put it back in um, once I get the USB 3 sorted on the top of the new case. It's kind of swings and roundabouts really. I've got to sacrifice something, which is, which is a shame. So I'm actually gonna keep this fan in here because I've got two additional fans in there. And to be honest, this is just, you know, it's looking a bit gunky and horrible. Let's get the motherboard screws out. One more screw there, nice and easy. Now this should come out nice and easy. There we go. Uh, I'll just take, probably won't need that. Take that out, because I believe I'll need that. It doesn't really go with my new case, but for the time being, it'll do. Right. SSD out. So yeah, a lot, of these, a lot of these components I don't need anymore. I, I really don't know what to do with them. Might take them to a Curry's PC World to get them recycled, potentially. Sword. You know, it's a very, very satisfying building computers. It's a skill that I've learned very recently and I'm very happy about it. I've wanted to do stuff like this for ages, but I've never really had the chance or the money, the time, whatever. Let's get this new case going. Take that off, because I don't need it right now. I need this space. Got a little baggy full of doodads. Um, let's have a look. I think I'll put in another board to begin with. Purely because knowing me, I will <laughs> knock it off or something like that. Uh, that's weird. I guess that's what you do with them. Okay, this I think needs to be... Oop. Actually, 
actually taken out properly. Now, weirdly, this case actually has slots to move your fan up and down. I don't know why it has that, but hey, some cool features there. Yeah, so this actually just comes out like so. That's pretty cool. And that obviously goes back on there to hold it in. Cool. Properly. Oh, it kind of does, it just kind of sits in there. Before it was kind of, I don't know, locked in place, but that'll do. I'm sure it will stay in when I put the motherboard in. Like that. Yes, I think that is perfect. Hmm, I tell a lie, it isn't, it's not going in properly. <laughs> that was terrible. No, I'm just going to leave it out. Forget that. Just get this motherboard in properly this time. So it does kind of look weird just being able to see in, but you know what? That's fine. More ventilation, I guess. Yeah, let's say more ventilation. It's fallen through the fan and I can't get it out. <laughs> that is very, very unfortunate. pretty secure. Yeah, it looks a bit weird with that kind of you no know, backplate on, but whatever. <laughs> Let's connect this fan up. Take it around there. Cable management, nice. Audio, USB. I wonder where all the cables are. Second lot of USB and a card reader, and then yeah, the USB 3. I don't have a component on my board yet for this, so this will just be tucked away. I'll try and stick it kind of through the back. That's out of the way. I'll deal with that later. Can this go down here? Potentially. It looks that way. Uh, These are super duper fiddly. Anyway, yeah, let's stick the HD audio in. Sweet. What's this? USB and USB and card reader. Sweet, so that is all sorted. Um, okay, it's really weird. You have to kind of put it on there so it goes into these little kind of ridges here and then just kind of scoop it down there scooch it down there and then you actually screw in the other side there so I use these because I know I know these work Oh, 
that done. So I put this in last because this is the first thing I'm going to be taking out. So I wanted to put every bit of like wiring that I could to kind of sort it all out so that I can just overlay all this over it. And then when the time comes, I need to um, when the time comes, I need to take the power brick out. I can, and it's not like uh, mushed in with all the um, all the other stuff. Okay, that's better. It's a short cable. That's what I need. Well, and all this. Can just be filmed into there. Cable management, woo! That is about the most chaotic build you will ever see. But we got there in the end, and hopefully everything works. Hopefully. Should have really tested it all as I went, but you know what? Whatever. Be fine. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, everything seems to be turned on. At least the lights are and the fans are, which is great. Um, so I'm gonna go around and check everything to make sure all the USBs work, all that kind of stuff, the SD cards, all that. Um, and I'm gonna skip forward a couple of days to when I've got the components that I need. Boom, day two of my PC build. I finally managed to get everything that I need to finish this machine. So without further ado, let's continue on with building this thing. And yeah, let's talk about my graphics card. Now, this thing is a Sapphire Nitro uh, AMD Adeon GX580, if I remember correctly. And this is secondhand. Uh, I got it from CEX uh, with some credit that I had with them. This is a little bit beat up. Hopefully it works, but if not, I can just take it back and get a refund or get another one. And then next up, I have my PSU. And this is brand new because I don't really want to skimp on the power. <laughs> this I got from um, PC Curries, PC World Curries. And this is a Colink Core 600 Watt ATX series power supply. I'm gonna replace this, make sure everything works, and then put this graphics card in. I have a monitor just to make sure that everything does work. So yeah, let's do this. So like I said, this will come out super duper easy because I planned ahead. Now this new power cable, I did not realize that it still had the multicolored wires, which is, you know, neither here nor there, to be honest. Um, but I kind of wish that it had kind of black wires because it kind of just looks better. So hopefully, hopefully this will just slide in. So far so good. Let's line it up. Oh, this is lovely entangled. So, back me over. I'm probably gonna have no hope whatsoever in untangling these, but whatever, it's fine. So that's two things sorted. Oh, I've got loads and loads of cables. Um, I'll need this as well. That's for my, there for my graphics card. And then I'll just put one of these here. Cool, so. So the moment of truth. Does this thing turn on? Oh wait, I need to turn the power and plug the cable in. <laughs> that would help. Let's try that again. Okay. We have a problem. So it turns out I was putting in the wrong cable for whatever reason, which I didn't realize. Let's just insert this in here and see if it boots up on the screen. Yeah, so it's booting up nicely. It's probably going to go to some kind of error, but we can sort that out later. 
Okay, no, it's fine. So this is going to be an incredibly tight fit, but it should be fine. There's the unbutton. Okay, so it's lighting up, which looks really nice actually. Okay, so this is secured snugly. Just about anyway. So that is that. It seems pretty secure. Okay. So before I turn it all back on, I'm just gonna secure this in place so it's not flopping around. Let's try and saw this absolute rat's nest of cables. Uh, just shove all this down here. <laughs> that is cable management at its finest day. Eh? I'm sure there's some seasoned pros out there just absolutely horrified <laughs> by what I've done here. But you know what? This is my first proper build, so go easy on me, yeah? HDMI plugged into my graphics card. Power cable inserted. Voila. It turns on, and really cool. Sapphire right there. Is it gonna do anything? Okay, it says no signal, that's not good. What am I doing wrong? Bear with me. So yeah, turns out that my graphics card not being detected was pretty much the least of my worries. What happened was, when I turned the camera off, I tinkered around with my PC for a while, trying to get it working, looking at YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff, just to see if this thing turned on. And eventually I did get it to work. I'm not entirely sure how I did that, but I did things like taking the CMOS battery out, using different monitors, different cables, just restarting the computer loads and loads of times, and eventually I got it working. Still not sure how. If anyone in the comments can enlighten me, then by all means, please do. But yeah, I got it working. I started playing games, I installed them, and it seemed to be working fine, which is absolutely fantastic. I was absolutely ecstatic and super duper excited. And then I decided to clear out my SSD a little bit because it's not a massive SSD and I had some kind of random things on there that I didn't really want to have anymore, including Ubuntu, the Linux operating system that I was dual booting with alongside Windows 10. And I just decided to delete the partition and assimilate that free partition into my Windows 10 one. Unbeknownst to me, that meant that I literally just locked myself out of my own computer because when I tried to reboot the computer, it was looking for the Ubuntu operating system, but it wasn't there and it was basically locking me out. Um, I had no idea that was a thing. So more for me. I tried lots and lots of things to try and get it working. I just couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get it to go past this particular screen, which was ridiculous, but it was my own fault for not researching into what I was trying to do. So eventually I just decided to reinstall Windows 10, just do a clean sweep of the entire system to try and make it better, and it did. I was able to boot into Windows 10, it got rid of Ubuntu, and I was happy. Um, I didn't really lose a lot of stuff because before this entire thing, I was smart enough to back up everything that I had on my computer, which was a good move, put it that way. Um, so yeah, overall a fun yet stressful experience. I'm really, really glad that I've learned how to do this. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time, as I said previously. And yeah, it's just a new skill to add to my repertoire. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not gonna shoehorn in any gameplay footage to this video because it's getting a little bit long now. I try to not do more than 25 minutes of footage because I personally tend to just zone out after that amount of time. I will release a video later on of me playing some games on my new PC just to you know, show you guys how it runs and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, until then, I really hope you enjoyed this video. By all means, like, comment, subscribe, 
all that social media goodness, and as always, keep living that best nerd life.